When did you first um, meet Kaylin? Okay, let's see. Um, honestly, it was about shortly after her and John had met literally for the first time. And I don't know if you knew this, but they met from the internet. Meg's claims to have introduced them. But they were talking, I think it was MySpace at the time that they were talking through. And a lot of people know when we and met and met, like we were both two very strong personalities and we were both very immature at that time. So we honestly didn't like each other at the first meeting. It took a couple weeks and I finally like realized like we were both artists. That's when we started connecting to things. And um, yeah, that was about it. It finally like a few weeks later after her strong personality and my strong personality had clashed, we connected on the art level. And that's what brought us closer together, so. Yeah, um, at the time were you guys in high school together or had you both just graduated? Uh, we were in high school. Yeah, um, I was a grade above her, but yeah, she was, uh, I think she actually was going to Butler Tech at the time, or getting ready to go to Butler Tech that I know of, where she had started working on the, uh, what was it, that? I guess graphic design is what you would call it, which was not, like, I messed around with that, but she was like a pro at it compared to me, it's just like the Photoshop and editing photos, and I was a photographer, so... Yeah, nothing compared to her. What were your impressions of, you know, when of her and John as a couple and, and of him? Oh, they seemed perfect when they first got together, honestly. Um, I felt like that Caitlin was finally the type of girl he was looking for, and they were perfect for each other. They brought out the best in each other for the first while that they were together. Um, but to be completely honest, I think there was a lot of things that went on behind closed doors that they didn't want people to know about. Like even later on down the line, they still claimed they had never argued, they never fought. I witnessed a couple fights between them, so I know that not to be true. Well, Caitlin would admit that they fought, but John claims and still swears up and down they never fought, so. Yeah. Would, would she confide in you a lot of times about their, them fighting? Um, not a lot, but quite a few times, yeah, she did. Or um, she would kind of just give me this look like, ah, oh, I can't believe this is happening again type thing. She wasn't the type that, when she was mad, she would lock up and just get really quiet. Um, I think more than anything, she confided into her friend Michelle Feist rather than me. Um, just because she knew I was friends with John too, probably didn't want me running back and telling John those things. So yeah. When um, did she ever, you know, give me one or two? Can you give me one or two examples of what they might have thought about? Was it typical couple stuff? Um, it was typical couple stuff, but the things that stick out me, to me the most was shortly before she disappeared and the last time she had came over to my house um, it was something that wouldn't typically upset her this badly um, he parked too far away from my house and made her walk and she stormed in my door would not talk um, I'm not gonna lie we were smoking a little bit then and she would not come out and smoke with us just sat there like with her drawing pad and his cell phone and would not tell me what was wrong, but she was extremely angry. And I asked her why, and the only thing she just snapped at me was like, I didn't want to have to walk that far. He didn't have to park that far away. And those were the only words she had spoke to me, and that just shocked me. She would not have usually let that get to her so badly. Um, another time I'm trying to think of... <sighs> well, she was always getting mad at him for the amount of money he spent on stupid things and things that didn't need to be spent on, like um, the amount of marijuana he would buy when they would already have some or, you know, stuff like that, just blowing money like it was no thing and they were getting ready to move to Colorado. So why are you spending all this money and we're about to get married? And then at the same time, he's getting on to her about the car money that she owes that, you know, his mom had helped her out with. So, yeah. What was their plan with Colorado? Did she ever tell you whose idea it was and what they were gonna do out there? It was both of their ideas. Um, I think she was kind of questioning it towards the end though because she was always like 
carrying around this like binder notebook thing, planning things out. And she was talking about transferring to a David's Bridal out in Colorado. And, you know, just uh, working there while John did whatever, but it didn't seem like he really had any plans for a job down there. She had already planned on transferring to David's Bridal. But she was doing all the planning and getting really serious about it, and he wasn't taking it seriously, and I think that was making her have second thoughts about it. Do you remember the last time that you saw her? Yeah, um... Last time I saw her, I think, may have been, it was her spring fling party, I think she had called it, at over at our friend Biz and Nick's house. I don't even remember where it was at. It was at some trailer park, and she decided to throw this welcoming of spring party, and um, we went there, and everything was good. There was no arguments, no drama, no nothing. I mean, um... I left kind of early because, first of all, the electricity somehow went out. They were starting to run things off a generator, and she didn't drink much, but she had, like, a bottle of bourbon or something that she was sipping on, and everything was pretty happy. I just started dating a guy named Zach, and, you know, we were there, and that was that. And um, Everything had seemed fine. It was about like a two week lapse of time that we really hadn't seen each other, and then all of a sudden she disappeared. So, do you remember what you were doing, where you were when you got the news that she was missing? Yes, um, it was the day after, no, it was Sunday at the Sacred Heart Festival. Me and my friend, my friend Ashley Abrams. Um, showed up there like maybe an hour before Sacred Heart was about to close because we both had worked and I hadn't got to make it all weekend there because I'd worked and um, we're walking around everything's closing down and they start yelling over the intercom if there's a Caitlin Markham here please come to this so and so stand and you know please come here right away eventually after the third or fourth time I'm like okay what's going on so I start calling her phone she's not answering call John's phone, he's not answering. Um, I walk up to the stand and I ask them and I guess John Carter's mother had came up there and told them to call over the intercom for her. A little bit of time goes by and you realize, hey, she's actually missing. What are the first thoughts going through your mind about that? I had no idea what to think. Like, I really didn't. Um, it wasn't until a few weeks later that it hit me like, gosh, something bad happened. And when that thought hit me, it just hit me that it had to be somebody that we knew. Like, at first I was defending John Carter um, the first few days. Like, everybody straight went after him the first day that it hit the news and everything. And I was defending all that. And then I started questioning everybody in our group of friends. I really do believe it was somebody we all knew, Caitlin knew, trusted. Um, I don't think she would have went as quietly as she did. I don't think, you know, they would have ended up in her house. It was obviously somebody she and all of us knew. And I just, I feel very strongly for that to be true. Uh, after you and some of your friends that all knew Caitlin and John started getting together, comparing notes and talking. Uh, did you find out anything at all uh, that maybe would lead you to believe on who might have done this? Um, bits and pieces of things did give me a few clues of who it possibly could have been. Um, I just felt like the group of friends started getting mad at me because I was talking to the police and I was one of the most cooperative ones, which made me think that people knew things and weren't telling the truth. So yeah, I definitely, like, I mean, they wouldn't have said anything, it's just the vibes they gave off and how everybody just kind of cut me off, except for John Carter, which was strange to me even. Um, he was wanting to come around a lot still, and he was probably about the only one. Nobody else would speak to me or hang out with me or answer my calls. So um, I felt like any time I would 
speak to the Fairfield Police Department, information got back to certain people in that group, and they got mad at me about it, which I don't know how that was happening. Um, but no, nobody ever actually said anything. Nobody would hardly talk to me at all. So it's still that way. Do you ever talk to John anymore? Um, we run into each other here and there. We talk to each other sometimes, but I don't think either one of us go out of our way to speak to each other at all. No. <laughs> do you believe that he had anything to do with this? I don't think he intentionally had a way of doing anything to do with that, but I do believe he, there is some involvement on his behalf, yes. I do. Um, I don't think he ever meant anything to happen to her, but I do believe he knew that something was going to happen, not to the extent that it did. I don't think he meant for her to get hurt, but I do believe he was involved. Do you think the case will ever be solved? Yeah, and I think that case is going to be solved soon. I really do. I feel it. I think that there is enough evidence now. Um, they know enough. They just got to convince whoever's in charge right now, and I think pretty soon it's all going to come to a head and everybody will be exposed. How often do you think of Caitlin nowadays? Every day, all the time. Uh, little things remind me of her, especially now that it's getting like warm out and the butterflies are out. and um, Now that I'm getting back into art again, especially any artsy type of thing, because I felt like she was kind of like amused to me. I fell out of art, especially like drawing and painting and stuff, but me and her got together. She brought that out to me. And I feel like she's just kind of somewhere near me, like poking me, like, hey, you need to get back into art with a stick. Like, you get together, <laughs> do that. <laughs> so, yeah. Great. Um, is there anything I haven't asked you that you'd like to say or talk about? Um, just that, you know, I know for a fact that the police department, the private investigator, everything are on to the people that did this and they are going to be found soon and I hope so because they deserve it and let's just hope that it's soon. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. If Caitlin were here today and you could say something to her, what would you say? Uh, definitely that I wish I would have spent more time with her and that um, she would have confided more into me about things, so I would have known what was going on. Um, I have regrets every day that I couldn't stop this from happening. And um, she was a very private person, so she wouldn't confide in many people about things. Sad thing is, I think she confided into John more about anything, and I think that was a mistake. I think that's what got her to where she is now, so.